They might talk about humor, music, film, books, football, and box sets, exercise, and maybe even food. Trivia and sport, politics and health, sometimes well-being too. On the life with Brian. On the life with Brian. Hello again and welcome to episode 38 of Life with Brian, the podcast hosted by Celtic and Manchester United legend Brian McClare, somewhat ably assisted by myself, Mark Godfrey, and football scribe Matthew Christ. Um, how are you both doing? Very good, thank you, sir. Yeah, all good, all good this side of the Mersey. <laughs> okay, well, we, uh, as always, we've got a special guest uh, and this time around uh, we have an actor uh, with film and TV credits coming out of his ears. He starred in the recent acclaimed BBC drama Mayflies alongside Martin Comston and Ashley Jensen and has played characters as diverse as former minister Robin Cook and artist Vincent van Gogh. Um, he also happens to be Celtic daft. Um, it's a big hello to Tony Curran. Um, or should that be hail, hail, Tony? Indeed, hail, hail, gentlemen. It's nice to be here. Yeah, welcome, Tony. Thanks for joining us. You're not in uh, Los Angeles, are you? No, I'm in... Uh... I'm in London, Brian. Oh, that's all right, because I looked at the time and I thought that would be proper dedication if somebody's getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Exactly. You, you know, come, the, the, the only and speak to I, us. Yeah, the only time I get up at that time in the morning is to see a certain Glasgow derby, you know? Oh, right. <laughs> right. Patrick and Clyde's a big game. And exactly. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourites. <laughs> Um, preparing for the episode, Tony, we figured out that um, you're old enough to have seen Chucky pull on the green and white hoops. Um, was he one of your early heroes back in the 80s? Yeah, almost definitely. Um, you know, the uh, Paul McStay, Roy Aiken era. Yeah, I used to go to Parkhead all the time, you know, it would be uh, from when I was seven years old, I'd go to the jungle. So, um, and, uh, you know, try to avoid being crushed. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, um, Brian McClare was a big uh, a big hero of a lot of Celtic fans, obviously. Um, Paul McStay, Murdo McLeod, that whole uh, that whole wonderful 80s period and with uh, arguably one of the best away kits Celtic have ever produced, you know. That famous St Mirren game, for instance, <laughs> Love Street, uh, which is obviously a, um, a memorable league victory. But, um, yeah, no, it's uh, many good memories watching... Uh, Watching Brian McClure and the boys, you know. Well, the well, first thing that uh, came to to me after having a look at things is that uh, well, I love numbers, Tony, and I particularly like odd numbers, and uh -huh. I'm so jealous of your date of birth. Really? Because <laughs> thirteen was a number that I ended up with at Manchester United, right? And sixty nine, two of my favourite all time. <laughs> numbers so <laughs> I was you... proper envious when I found out about that and of clearly December which is that's the same month as I was born so yeah are you, are you a Sagittarius Brian I'm a Sagittarian yeah right. I have when... I'm, I have no idea about what any of the traits or <laughs> alleged traits may be with regards to uh, horoscopes but uh, mine's yeah. is uh, my birthday's on the 8th right and I'll tell you a little thing about it I was born on the 8th of December right which is a holy day of obligation. Mm -hmm. It's the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Right? <laughs> uh -huh. And I was born on a Sunday also. Right? right? So a proper blessed child. You're right? the blessed chosen baby. one. <laughs> blessed baby. No, <laughs> didn't become in. Nothing became of it, you know. <laughs> and the, the local parish, one of the local parish priests said to my mother, have you th thought of christening them, baptising them, Mary? But seriously, that wasn't a joke, you know, because <laughs> Mary, you know, and, and my mother went, eh, no, I don't think it's a good idea. What about middle name then? And she said, no, I think he'll have enough trouble getting through his life called, being called Brian. <laughs> I don't know, Brian, Mary, Mary McClare's got a certain ring to oh, it. Oh, it would have been, oh. now it would have been wonderful, but I'm, I'm not sure, I'd have, <laughs> I can't imagine what it would have been like going, growing up and yeah. going through, going through in school in the West. Um, Anytime west of Scotland, you know, because <laughs> because one of the things I know, I've, I've 
read about you is that you have to confirm this or not because there's so much stuff out there whether yeah. it's true or not. But uh, I think you mentioned that uh, you you'd got bullied at school. Yes. Yeah. And uh, how did you? Is that true? So how did you cope with it? Um, it's a good question. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Uh, you know, because it's a whole west coast of Scotland or a very male trait. You don't. Um, you don't. You don't stop gunning or you don't talk about your past. But. I think, you know, things are changing and I did, and because of Mayflies and the relationship I have with Martin Comston, a lot of guys have come up to me and said, oh, you know, it was about cancer, it was about euthanasia. But what I really, um, what I got from it was like the, you know, guys, men being very sort of earnest with their, you know, their, their feelings about themselves or their past or whatever and um, sharing how they felt. Well, I guess I dealt with it by sort of cutting off, cutting myself off, which was a bit uh, ostracising myself, which was um, probably not a very good thing to do. Um, and also maybe diving into drama, you know, a distraction of drama, because you were just, uh, you know, obviously now I'm ginger and beautiful and unique, <laughs> Brian, but um, back then you thought you were just a wee ginger um, ball bag from the west coast of Scotland, you know, but um, and then eventually, uh, you know, you realized that uh, you sort of moved on from it, and a lot of the people uh, that were bullying you were probably, I don't know, they might have been bullied themselves, you know, they were victims themselves. But I guess I just sort of I, I did a lot of running, track running, I did the sort of uh, events like that, and then I got into drama. So I think uh, that was an escapism for me. I guess to get away from, uh, you know, to get away from uh, individuals who were, you know, maybe messed up themselves, and that's why they were, uh, you know, lashing out. You know. Did you find the athleticism good then? Because most of the bullies that were at school that I was at school with were unathletic, so you could run away from them. Right. <laughs> I think they wouldn't chase you very far. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty good at long distance and then four hundred meters. So. Uh, but then I remember, you know, running away from bullies, you, there's something in your gut that goes, I'll oh, turn around and lamp the bastard, you know? Um, <laughs> but uh, but a, a majority of the time, because I was in, like Tory Glen, south side of Glasgow, Rutherglen, Kings Park, there was some, uh, there was some feisty characters back then. They're probably all dead now or in jail, bless them. But um, back when I was like, you know, 12, 13, um, you know, but uh, it makes you what you are, you know. So, uh, but at the time, it would, it would definitely get inside your head, you know. But I also had some good friends, you know, which I still have gotten in Glasgow to this day. Were you well, bullied, Brian? I, did you ever? Aye? Oh, I, yeah. Did was, the, was it because of the beard? You had a beard? I had a beard. I, yeah, I, looked like, I, looked, I looked like this when I was 13. Yeah. <laughs> he gets bullied right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think that any kind of ones you to see there's certainly when my recollection is it was either kids who were who the ones who got bullied and the bullies because there was just so many, so many of them and they were from like, a lot of them were from tough backgrounds themselves, you know, and, and yeah. that my the, the particular class I was in in first year, second year see, was full of them. There was just loads. It was and that actually there was a, a, a hierarchy of bullies. There was a top top bully, and then there was a bottom bully, and then below that was the ones that got bullied. You right? Know? <laughs> Could you work your way up? Well, no, not really, because well, you took, well, what happened to me was that, and I remember it vividly. I was in the uh, tech drawn, and one of the smaller or lower echelon bullies was was trying to do something, and I, I just lost it, and I kicked him twice in the balls. <laughs> right, waiting. This is waiting in the queue to go out. So the teacher didn't see him, and he was so shocked. You know, he this he just he never said anything or anything like that. And the the top bully just went, "Well done. He deserved that." And that from that moment on, that was it done. You know, so it was just, but it was pretty scary, you know, because you lived near where they lived, you knew where they lived, you know, and um, yeah. I was really I'd left primary school early, so I was really young. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. all the all the kids were nearly all a year older than me, you know. So, but yeah, I, I just lost it that day, and I just the guy got it, and that was it from finish from then on, you know. But like you said, I think there's a lot more uh, opportunities and less fear about talking about things. I watched Mayflies last night. 
Are you dead? Not a, well, they're not a dry eye in the house. <laughs> wonderful yeah. story, wonderful acting. I mean, it was it was absolutely tremendous. But thank one you. Of the, one of the things that, uh, that I pick up little things from in that. Did you choose the music T-shirts of the Sunday choosing for you? No, it's um, uh, yeah. No, I think uh, I, there was a discussion about it, but um, yeah, our director, our lovely director, Peter Mackie Burns, and I think uh, a lot of it was in the the novel as well, Andrew Hagen's novel. It's funny you see that. I've actually got one of those T-shirts on right now. Yeah, the Joy Division, the Cheese and Mary Chain, the Joy Division one, the yellow Joy one. Division. Um, so it's uh, not you're not often you get yellow ones. No, yeah, no, it was a, it was a good colour, and I, I'm living here in Notting Hill, and there's a little store. So which you pinched I'm walk, it. Walking past, I pinched it, but I was walking <laughs> past it a few months ago, and they've got that exact Joy Division T-shirt in the window, and I'm like, oh, look, there you go. You can uh, watch Mayflies and get your Joy Division. Are you a fan of those uh, of those bands at the time? There's a lot. Of oh, the Mary Chain. You had a Jesus and Mary Chain T-shirt on when you were went for a swim with all your clothes on. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was a wee bit. It was a wee bit chilly. I've got to say, down your Ayrshire coast. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is, whether you get your clothes on or not. Going into the going out the water down there, isn't it? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was a massive fan of all those kind of things. Yeah, so, um, being the, yeah, no, it was a good I'm period. Six for years, I'm six years older than you, so yeah. Um, were you? I think you read. So, you a Paul Weller fan of the sea? That's oh, huge! Yeah, huge. Actually, I was just. Um, in fact, it was. It was odd. I was going to the studios a few days ago, West London Studios, to shoot this thing I'm doing right now. And basically, the traffic was so bad, we had to get... I, I literally got out of the car and walked the last half mile, and I filmed a little bit of it. And then uh, I put a little bon bit on Instagram, and it was the, the jam track, you know, London traffic, going nowhere, London traffic. So, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was a huge fan of the jam, Paul Weller. Bruce Foxton and all that, and uh, I, I loved I loved the jam back in the day. It was a bit of a pseudo mod back in the day, um, you know, try to belong somewhere with my green parker and my winkle pickers. So, uh, well, so you actually got involved in the fashion thing. I, did, as well. I didn't have a lambretta or a Vespa. No. I couldn't afford a, a, a wee a wee moped, but I, I definitely got into the. Uh, well, the you old, would be too young to ride the. the yeah. Moped I'll be, Early, early teens, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the first uh, concert I went to. It was a jam. Oh, amazing. It was a 15-year-old at the, um, the Glasgow Apollo. Oh, but, but I fell out with uh, Weller because he, he he left or the jam disbanded after I was like upset about that. So I, right. I wouldn't, I'd stop listening to him that Weller did from, from then on just to, you know. <laughs> so so we shouldn't ask him on the show anytime soon. No, you can or, ask or him. Or forgiving him. him. <laughs> no, I'll never forgive him for that. He can't do that when you just if one of your favourite bands, if not their favourite <laughs> band, and he decides he's going to go and join the Style Council or create the style. <laughs> Something slightly different. Although at the end of the jam stuff, it, you can hear... Yeah, uh, little bits that would go on to be that sound. Uh, however, yeah. I, uh, last year I saw the um, from the Jam, which is Foxton's band. Right. And, uh, cool. e oh, excellent. Where was that, Brian? Yeah, uh, well, I saw them in uh, in Trun, but they're playing all over the place. They're called From the Jam. Foxton's the he's the driving force behind it. But the guy who's singer is wonderful. He's a, he's one he yeah. can sing the songs the, the weather weather because he's aged and I wouldn't be able to sing uh, the range of of the songs in the jam. But this guy is yeah, vocal. Is, yeah. uh, he's, he's brilliant. And Foxton's just a, a brilliant. Yeah, so. he's amazing. Yeah, it was a cool uh, cool time for music. I recently took my daughter when I finished Mayflies. Actually, um, uh, I got back to LA and. Uh, uh, the Pet Shop Boys and uh, New Order were playing together. Oh, they're playing together, aren't they? The Hollywood Bowl, yeah. yeah. I took yeah. my daughter to that. And she was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to introduce a, a nine-year-old to uh, some eighties, <laughs> some eighties fair, you know. And did she like it? Uh, she loved it. I should have last. Yeah. yeah. Was that her first gig then? It was her. Well, no, she'd been she'd been to a few other gigs before that, smaller ones. But that that's the first big gig she sort of oh, been well. to, you know. I thought, yeah. right, here's what your da, your mo and da were, were brought up with, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so see if she see if she can um, relate to it somehow. 
But, uh, yeah, no, the 80s music was, uh, well, it was what we were brought up with, wasn't it? So it was, um, it always, it'll always hold a special place in your, in your, in your soul. So li listening to 80s music, watching McLare at Parkhead, it couldn't have, couldn't have got much better. <laughs> no, I know. Well, Which, I mean, he's not... watching me. He's watching Paul Mix there. <laughs> well, I was going <laughs> to. I was going to go back to the um, the sales thing because you haven't really touched on it too much. Um, tell me, you know, growing up, what your memories were following Celtic and the, the era that really defined your your love of the club. Well, I think because well, I lived in I lived in Kings Park. My mother still lives there. Literally, Kingsbridge Drive is about half a mile away from Hamden. You know, may have heard of the old hand and roar. So when I was literally five, six years of age, I'd be in my back garden um, and there's loads of cars parked, Celtic Rangers, Aberdeen, whoever, or, or an international game, that everybody's parked on our street. Um, and you know that, you know, back then it was 70, maybe 75,000 at um, uh, Hamden Park. And, you know, that incredible silence before a goal goes in that intake of breath of the whole crowd so you'd hear that and then you'd hear these you know thousands of people so I was hearing that from half a mile away and it definitely you know got into your soul a few years later I'd go to um, Hamden Park and um, I remember one of my first memories it was a Celtic it was a cup final and uh, it was the case of um, uh, him, him, Mr Gonagy's a lifty i.e. can you pick me up and throw me over the turnstile and uh, one of the first, I remember this distinctly, it was an older guy, kind of reddish hair. I, I approached him, he had one of those um, uh, sheepskin jackets on. And I said, excuse me, mister, Gonagy's a lefty. And he turned round to me and he goes, son, I'm not a punter. Go and get a lefty off somewhere else, you know. And it was Archie McPherson. <laughs> <laughs> son, I'm not a punter. <laughs> What are you talking about? And I was a bit like this big ginger heated guy. And I was like, you know, he had that, you know, Del, Del Trotter sheepskin jacket on. I'm no a punter. And I was like, oh, all right, aren't you? So, um, but then I've, obviously I got thro thrown over the ground and, uh, you know, and then me and my mate, I mean, John James McBurdy or John Dellon, whoever it was, we'd, we'd um, you know, we'd be over jumping up and down, a couple of seven-year-olds, and we're like, we're in, we're in. And then you got to the, the, the game and you'd be trying to get a view. You know, you're only a wee guy standing with all these other men and, you know, the lager and whatever else flowing around your, your feet. Um, but that was where my first memories. And then I would go to, uh, I'd go to Celtic Park as well. I'd normally end up in the jungle. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a, a wild, uh, beautiful time. In fact, I was just watching on, I was just watching the uh, Jackie, uh, Jack Anofsky, you know, he scored four goals that night against, what was it? Um, Partizan Belgrade. Pa Partizan it? Belgrade. I was in the jungle that night. I just remember how euphoric that was. And of course, we still, uh, we still didn't qualify. Out, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what was it 5-4 or something? Some Five, that, it was yeah. an incredible yeah. Um, yeah. game. But, uh, Obviously, uh, Celtic Park has changed, you know, with what Fergus did and came in. But um, but those uh, early memories were... Uh, and also, I remember the, the centenary year going, um, being at the Celtic end was one of a huge memory. Win winning in the semi-final against Hearts. We were down 1-0, we won 2-1. You know, Caesar, Billy McNeil uh, was our manager. And then in the final... Um, um, I guess Gallagher scored for Dundee United and we're one nil down again. And I just I always remember looking at the touchline and seeing Billy McNeil with his suit on and all he was doing, chaps Brian, he was just waving his arms, waving his arms. And you had this feeling inside that we can do this, we can still win the double, you know. And then of course we equalized and then McAvenny scored the winner and the rest is history. And it was <laughs> I just um, you know, there's been some great games I've been to since I was at the 6 2 game. I've been to, you know, a bunch of other big matches, but I, I don't know. Winning that centenary double that season was definitely, I was 18, 17 at the time, was, it was one of my earliest memories of, a, of Celtic euphoric dreamland, you know. One of the but, things about that that I've heard yeah. you talking about before is that. Uh, probably the, end, the, the inspiring things for all the players on both sides was probably would be, I don't know, maybe Billy was the same kind of thing as most people had their holidays booked for just after that. 
<laughs> and yeah. uh, if it had gone to a replay that I'd have fucked up most people all this <laughs> one. <laughs> I did someone someone told me, I think it was Tosh McKinley or somebody was re- regaling a story about Billy Stark and he's like, uh, by the way, we better try and get a winner here because I'm I'm going to Toro Molinos next week. For... <laughs> you know? yeah, um, give the face the wrath of your missus for not winning or not losing the game, you know. Exactly. Because uh, you know, because the like anything else, is it with well, certainly in football terms in, in Scotland and in England, is that when your kids were at school, there was only a small window you could actually go away, you know, if with, yeah. you know, without taking them out with, out of school, you know. So that, yeah, that would have been a hell of an inspiration for yeah. For, no, I also uh, Brian that after the cup families, final, you know. Yeah, no. After the cup final, we went to a bunch of the boys. We went to Tenerife, a place called Pla, Pla de las Americas. And uh, we're at this uh, pool table playing, and then I'm all of a sudden I'm like, "Is that Billy McNeil?" And yeah, it was Billy McNeil and Tommy Burns, and uh, they were basically at the same complex as uh, as these six Glasgow boys. And of course, uh, yeah, for uh, eight, nine, ten days or whatever, we sort of see them at the pool. We'd be playing pool with them and, and basically talking about it. But but then it was they were such wonderful. Uh, gregarious, you know, approachable characters, human beings, and you had such great respect for them. Um, it was, it just felt like you were hanging out with your uncles, you know. Well, we, <laughs> you, Billy a, McNeil, you know, yeah, just, you would uh, have affinity with Tommy Burns, wouldn't you? Because he's a fellow ginger, wouldn't you? Indeed, so like, indeed, you know. yeah. <laughs> the ginger freedom front, yeah. <laughs> he was, uh, did you ever see the play about the play about Tommy's life? I, I've not seen that, that? no. It was beautiful, actually. It was very, uh, you know, it was, a, it was obviously a, very, a great shame what happened to him, but it was also a celebration of his life and, um, and uh, you know, what, what he achieved and how much, you know, I don't know if there's a Celtic player who loves Celtic as much as he does, but, um, but yeah, I mean, what a, what a character. Did you have much, uh, did you hang out with... Um, he was at, Brian. He was uh, the well, the Obviously. four years I was at Celtic. Tommy was Celtic. a player then, you know. Of course, so, yeah. So like, every day he'd come into the dressing room, he'd have an, he'd have, he was a little bit like a philosopher, a bit funny, you know. <laughs> you know he, he'd say things like to you, which is well, he, it's it's more relevant, I suppose, at this present moment. But he'd he'd come in in the morning or something like that, and he'd turn around and go. I used to sit, I'd come in the door, the old dressing room, and I would sit around in the corner, and he would have to walk past everybody and sit at the far side. And uh, he was sitting one day and he just turned around and went, what age are you, son? I said, um, uh, I'm 19. 19, I <laughs> See, in two weeks' time. See, in two weeks' time, I went, aye, two weeks' time, he says, you'll be 27. And I'm like, what the fuck is he on about? Because <laughs> <laughs> he was 27 at the time. And uh, it seems like uh, two weeks later that I'm now 59, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought uh, no, I, I don't know what he's on about this guy, you know. But it's, it was a way. Of, he didn't never explained it, you know. And I didn't really, I didn't have the courage to ask him what he meant. But I know now what he meant. You know, but <laughs> in, in hindsight, when yeah. I was nineteen, I was like, yeah, I, f- I don't understand you whatsoever, you know. So, yeah. but I was just laughing the other day as well of, of, of another philosopher in that dressing room who was who was funny, but wasn't funny. Be, be deliberately funny was Frank McGarvey. Yeah, and yeah. Frank McGarvey being a striker was was a, a teammate, but also uh, there was a comp- in com- competitor really to get into the team. You know, of course. And I, yeah. and I, was, I was just chatting to him some the other day about being in the bath, which is a a big bath, a communal bath. You know, which is nobody would even consider getting into this sort of stuff now with um, green <laughs> green soap. You know, green carbolic soap, not red. It had to be green carbolic soap. <laughs> And uh, there was only a but he would only just about cover your knees sitting down this water, you know. And I'm sitting uh-huh. in the bath myself, you know. And I wasn't in the team. And in comes uh, Frank McGarvey with uh, with his mate Davy Proven. And I thought, oh, I can't, I can't just get up and go out because I look cowardly, you know. I've just got to wait for my moment to go out. And say maintain some dignity, you know. So they get in and they're laughing and joking to each other, you know. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything. So and then Frank turns around and says to me, "This is some, this is his encouraging words. He's he's in the team. I'm not in the team." He said to me, "See you." 
And I was like, but what well, I see you. Yeah, yeah. I can see me, Frank. Yeah, yeah. See you. You're <laughs> down. You're see at this moment in time, you're down a big mine shaft. <laughs> yeah. This is somebody explaining whether he thinks I am in terms of mood, you know. I'm down a mine shaft, you know. And so I'm just mutting under my breath. Yeah, thanks for that. It's really fucking yeah, it's great, you know, teammates. You're not, I'm not playing. You're, just, you're rubbing it in, right? It's fucking hell. When can I get out? And then his son's like, no, he's not happy with that. No, no, you're no down a night. You're no down a mine shaft. And I'm like, right, you're down a big hole down a mine shaft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Thank and then he's that. fucking pissing off. He's in stitches, you know. Uh, and I'm like, ah. I just had to get up at that moment and just, just walk past the two of them, you know. Oh, my just, God. Just walk around and think, what a pair of wankers, you know. Well, they, <laughs> so were they constantly, obviously, the new boys, the young boys? Were no, they, it was just, it was it's Frank, it's just Frank's way, you know. Of, of, right. Of, and it, and he's, he is funny. I mean, like, he, what, he was really funny in yeah. all, all particular moments, you know, that I, I played in the game. Uh, and this is another thing I played in a, a, a charity game a few years ago and he was the manager and I was talking to uh, in fact I was talking to uh, uh, old John Dykes you know who you've yeah. you know, Celtic State of Mind sure because I think they were sponsoring the game and because I wasn't there at the appropriate time for the warm up he, I don't start the game it's a charity game and he's got me on the bench and I'm thinking to myself, this is something that's happened that he's been annoyed about with me 30 years ago. Right. Right. And this is something getting <laughs> back by not putting me on from the start of the game. <laughs> you know, and so the, and to show everybody else that he's the manager and he's making the decisions. I thought he was taking the piss, but I was like, right, I'm all right. And he goes, no, no, you have to wait. I'm like, <laughs> That's been the only time you're ever late in your life, Brian. You're never late. I was there, but because I wasn't there for the war, not, but I was there oh. for the five minutes before the game kicked off. He wasn't happy about that. But I think it was something that happened that was in his head from 30 or 40 years. You, were, you were still doing the mine shaft. I was right? still doing the mine shaft as far as he's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> talking, <laughs> of, talking of charity games, you, you took to the uh, famous Parkhead turf, Tony, didn't you, for a celebrity game, charity game? Uh, I did, yeah, yeah. That was um, that that was an incredible weekend. It was a, uh, you know, once again, it was a Scottish Cup final. It was the first uh, of those famous trebles with with Brendan, and of course Aberdeen were they were getting more losing uh, one 0 We tied it, and then of course there was the uh, the Wizard of Oz, Big Tom Rogic. I was there with my mates, um, Martin Comston, my nephew Barry Johnston, and then Ross McCall, and then of course. Uh, Tom Rogic with those big size 12 sent the Celtic fans into rapture and uh, scored in injury time and we, we won our first treble and the next day there was 60,000 at Celtic Park for uh, Henrik's Heroes versus Lugo's Legends and uh, we got on the bus Bobo Baldi, Henrik um, Mark Reaper, Tom Boyd, you know, all, all the boys. And my nephew worked for Adidas at the time, Adidas, whatever they call it. And I, he gave us free boots, you know, like proper cool boots, like the boots that um, Bruni wears, basically. Um, but as my mother would say, all the gear, no idea. <laughs> so, you know, you can wear bright green boots if you're Scott Brown or, you know, a little more after. But so we're on the bus, I'm on the bus with Martin and uh, Gianni Capaldi and, and Ross McCall and all that. We're on, the, I don't know if Gianni was there, but yeah, we're on the bus. And Henrik's at the back and I pull out these boots and I'm going here. I'm, I've got free pearls for Martin and for Ross. I'm like, guys, there you go. There you go. And, you know, these are quality football boots, but because they're somewhat colourful, Martin Comston and Ross are like, hey, wait a wee minute here. These are a bit bright. And I'm like, they're bright, they're free. <laughs> These are 250 pound football boots, pal, you know. So I take them out and all of a sudden I hear from the back of the bus, hey, hey guys, what do you got there? What do you got there? And we turn around and it's Henke. And we're like, oh, um, uh, just some football boots my nephew brought over from him. Um, he gave me from Germany, uh, Henrik. And he's like, well, we got a pair for me. You got a pair for me? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, oh, that's great. Thanks very much. And he goes, you know what? Those aren't football boots. These are football boots. And he picks up an old, dirty, well, brushed pair of black cup Mundiels 
that were his football boots. And he goes, no, these, son, these are football boots, you know. So, so we ended up, uh, you know, having the banter with him. I think Martin Comston got in the got in the dressing room and he had his number up and he was sitting next to Henke. Martin will tell you this. And of course, uh, Larson Tonstrom says, um, hey, uh, you know, actually, uh, can we swap? And Martin's like, what's that? He goes, uh, this is my locker. And Martin's like, I, 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 Henrik, no, no problem, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he obviously swapped over. Um, Tom Boyd was taking the game quite seriously once it started. And it was literally in the 65th, 70th minute. Me and Martin Comston, Ross McCall was on the other team. I think it was uh, your man Kennedy, who was a uh, big Kennedy, who was managing it. And I said, you know, we're just, we're just actors. All we want to do is play with Henke and Larson and Bobo and whatever else. Just put us on, Tom, put us on. And he says to me, Tony, wh where do you play? And I say, Tom, I'm an actor, but I'm I'm no footballer, but you know, I'm pretty quick still for my age. Put me on the wing, right, left wing, or midfield. And he's like, all right, all right, left back. And I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? So 78th minute, he puts me on left back, and I've got Lubomir Moravchik running at me, you know, which is terrifying. Anyway, I get the ball at one point from the, from Rab Douglas, and uh Call me old fashioned, but I couldn't be bothered defending. So I started herring up the wing with the ball instead of passing it to a midfielder <laughs> who may pass it to a striker. And and I look up and I you know my head's in a haze and I'm like, I'm a Celtic Park playing football. And that's all I see is this guy to my right to me. And I knocked the ball to him. And of course, my first pass was to Henrik Larson. It got to Henrik, someone lost possession. Uh, I got the ball back. I passed it to somebody else, but it, it went to the opposition player, which was um, uh, Stefan Mahi. Yeah. Now, apparently it's on tape somewhere, but I, 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 after I gave the ball away, I thought, right, I'm going to get that ball back. I don't know how, but I'm getting that <laughs> ball back. And I, I know Stefan Mahi is quite a physical player, but apparently I hit him like a freight train, you know, <laughs> and uh, he went down, I went down, and... Uh, Anyway, whatever the score was in the game, we came off and uh, my nephew said, oh, that was that was some tackle, by the way. I said, oh, good, good. And Tom Boyd came up behind me and I introduced him to my brother. And he goes, um, oh, it's the Tom, this is my brother Paul. He's like, oh, nice to meet you. Um, he goes, and Tom says, can I ask you something, Paul? And he says, ah, he goes, are you, are you sure your, your wee brother's an actor? And he's, um, he's like, ah, he's an actor. He goes, why? He goes, because he doesn't take direction very well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, so, yeah, left back, left back, left back. I was like, all right, Tom. But no, that was, a, that was an amazing weekend to, to have uh, um, to have the opportunity to play. I mean, uh, you know, Neil Lennon was there, bless him. I think he was celebrating the treble. And um, people were <laughs> casually vomiting on the pitch, you know. <laughs> um, and it was just carnage, you know. And then getting in the dressing room afterwards, it was a, yeah, I mean, it was a, yeah, it was a dream. I had my sort of a camera on and a bunch of boys in a WhatsApp group in LA, New York, or wherever a bunch of my mates. Uh, so it was a, yeah, I mean, who, who wouldn't want to play at Paradise, you know. Talking about your football skills on the film. <laughs> how, how many takes did it take you to do that keep you up in the last scene in that mayflies oh, that, <laughs> yeah that that was a visual effect Brian it wasn't actually me we got Frank Mac <laughs> we got Frank McAvenny in to do that <laughs> <laughs> no actually um, I know talk about acting you think acting you get you can get a wee bit you know inside your own head but trying to keep the ball up actually that was literally the last scene that I shot in that show um, was trying to uh, trying to keep the uh, trying to keep the ball up and volley it, but um, it was actually my excuse was that there was a bit of a there was a bit of a slope in that um, in that backyard, so that's why it took uh, fifty seven takes. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just thought it was a lovely way to finish because I could see the goals, and he, when I'm watching, I'm going, he's going to score a goal here is the last thing he ever does. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was a brilliant thing as a football player. I thought that's a brilliant thing, and he's got. He's, yeah. he's, 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 I don't know what you're going to do to keep you up a bit, but I think yeah, he's going to turn around and smash the ball, <laughs> and celebrate 
<laughs> and that's the last thing he that's the last thing he's ever done, you know. Yeah, it was quite a poignant it was quite a poignant moment because obviously, you know, not to get back to you know bullying or where that comes from, but you know, he didn't seem to have that relationship with his father and he, he was trying to please his dad, like, you know, young boys or young girls, you know, or, or want to do. And I guess all he wanted was his love from his father and he wanted to please his uh please his dad and of course he you know he wasn't very good at football and he always missed penalties but I guess to finish the, the show like that was quite um you know was quite moving one last thing on on Celtic I just wanted to uh touch on I understand there's some kind of uh familiar link um with Celtic through one of Chucky's old teammates uh Danny McGrain what's what's that all about well Danny McGrain was uh well, my grandfather, Tommy Riley, was a scout for Celtic from 66 to 74. He was a great friend of the Gleish, Jockstein, all of them, you know, the Lisbon Lions. And um, uh, he, he actually, uh, Danny McGrain played at Ibrox one night. It was a Scotland-England game. He was like 16. And afterwards, my grandpa went up to his house and he said, uh, uh, you know, Danny would like to sign you for Celtic. And... Um, I've told this story before, but it's quite interesting. And Danny famously said, which I've spoken to Danny about, he goes, I, I'd love to, Mr. Riley, but you, do you know that I'm a Protestant? And um, my grandfather says, son, I don't, we don't really care if you're a Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, or you come from another planetary system. As long as you can play football, you can play for Celtic. So, uh, and the rest is history, as it were. So, um, and I, when I see Danny, I was, yeah, I've told this story a few years ago. And he's like, aye, that's right. Your, your papa came up to my house and, and um, you know, uh, signed, uh, signed me for Celtic. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, the fact that my, my papa had a, well, a big part to play in, in Celtic. It was a friend of Jock Steen. There's always been, there's always been something that, uh, yeah. you know, it has been, uh, it's been very beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, you know. You end up in New York when you were 16, I think. Yeah. And you stayed there illegally, I assume. Well, for six months. <laughs> it was a three-week holiday that turned into uh, an old pal of mine, Mick Devine, that, uh, my friend Sean Conigan, his dad was from the Gorbals, his mum, <clears throat> Pat, was from uh, Brooklyn, Bay Ridge. And he came over to play for Clyde, actually, Sean Conigan, his name is... We became mates at a club called the Cue Ball off Victoria Road. Oh, I know what that is, yeah. yeah I and um, I went over there and uh, I ended up um, staying for a three-week holiday, which ended up staying for six months because I was a postman at the time in Glasgow. And I never went back to the Royal Mail. I'm sure they were relieved. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up working for um, this uh, construction company. But... Um, but did uh, you not? Did you not have a job set, uh, delivering sandwiches and other packages? I did. I had a job. There was a <clears throat> there was a, a guy. A guy. His, his name was Tony, and then there was a guy called Vito. And uh, it's almost like it was. <clears throat> it was before I, you know, before the the movie Goodfellas had come out, but it was in that area where it was sort of Goodfellas was set. There's a well, there's a place called Benson Bensonhurst. It's a little Jewish Italian neighbourhood. And a lot of the time, you know, this guy, Tony, you know, he'd be like, hey, yeah, uh, what's your name, kid? And I'd say, no, oh, my name's Tony. And he goes, what are you, uh, Irish? And I said, no, I'm actually uh, Scottish. He goes, why are you called Tony? Tony's an Italian name. <laughs> and I was like, what? What are you? Uh? And I was like, well, you know, I'm a Catholic. He goes, oh, you're a Catholic. Okay, hang on a second. And he'd be like, Vito. And I was like, all I wanted was four quarters for a dollar so I could get on the, uh, the L train to Manhattan. And I'm sort of sitting, standing there quivering. And this guy comes out, God bless him. He was a, like a human version of Jabba the Hutt. He was this gar gar gargantuan man with blood all down as he was a butcher. And he, he came out, he came out with these knives and he's like, what is it? And he's like, tell, 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 tell Vito your name. And I said, I'm sort of some, somewhat terrified. I'm like, I just told you my name. He went, yeah, well, tell him your name. And I went, hmm. My name's Tony. And he's like, 
Tony with this thatch of ginger hair. And he looked at me and I went, yeah. And he went, why are you called Tony? Tony's an Italian name. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I know, I, I just explained that to, to the other Tony. Anyway, for the next four or five months, uh, they're like, you want a job? And I'm like, sure. And uh, basically, I, they would give me sandwiches and a, a big brown bag or whatever. And I'd go around the streets in my bike and I would deliver the sandwiches. But there was on occasion where they would give me bags and um, it would be closed up or whatever and uh, packages and they'd be like, take this to Johnny in 88th Street. You know, and, uh, and they'd give me like 50 bucks or they'd give me 100 bucks and they'd go, don't look inside. <laughs> um, and uh, so basically, I, I'm not sure what I was delivering sometimes, but um, years <laughs> later when I watched Goodfellas, <laughs> and I saw uh, some of these, uh, you know, kids were doing what they were dropping off. You know, um, God only knows what um, what I might have been delivering to those boys. But a, a, the guy I was with, Mick Devine, on Twitter yesterday said, um, "Tell the guys the story of uh, how I jumped on an oil truck on Ninety Second Street one night, coming out of a bar at four in the morning, <clears throat> just messing around. I'm like, hey guys, hey guys, I jumped on this oil truck." And uh, uh, it took off, and I'm like, hey, you know, giving them the fingers, whatever. Hey, look at me. I'm a super wee boy, drunk at four in the morning. The oil truck took off and caught a green light and then caught another green light (laughs) and another green light and another green light. And for blocks and blocks and blocks, I'm standing on the back of this thing. And it's not going below 50 mile an hour. 40, 50 mile an hour, green light, green light, green light after block after block. And in the, in the, this is a true story, by the way, and in the distance, all I see is the great and mighty Ferrisano Bridge, right? <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. And then there's the on-ramp, and he, he's literally pulling out of B- Bay Ridge. He gets on the on-ramp, and this, pardon my French, this freaking, this oil truck takes up off the on-ramp and I'm still holding on to the back of this thing. I literally, it, it drives over the Verrozano Narrows Bridge, over the freaking Hudson. And all I can see, back in the day, God bless, it was the incredible skyline of New York City. It was the, the Twin Towers. It was just, you know, and I'm on the back of this thing. The guy's going 60, so whatever. And I'm shitting myself <laughs> going over this bridge. <laughs> and it was uh, literally for uh, it was the, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge because years later I, I found out it was almost like three miles long because I've ran two New York marathons back across from Staten Island into Brooklyn. But li- you know, little did I know that I'd be doing that at the time. I'm holding on to this thing. We get to Staten Island. There's a toll booth and the thing has to stop. So it stops <laughs> eventually and I get off. <laughs> and uh, and I don't think the guy even knew I was on the bloody thing. I get off and I end up having to walk across the bridge and back <laughs> to Brooklyn to my friend's house, which I got back in at six six thirty in the morning, and he was waiting for me, Sean. <laughs> and they were all pushing themselves, laughing. Like, what the fuck? Where are you? And I was like, it, it didn't stop. It didn't drop below forty mile an hour. Anyway, anyway, daft story. New York. But as was mentioned at the, at the start of the, the show, you, you're based in Los Angeles now and have been for, for some time. Um, is it as crazy a, crazy a place as, uh, as, as people imagine for a, a young lad from King's Park in Glasgow? Yeah, well, I, God, I went over there. I was in London when I was 94. I came down here when I was 24 and then eventually moved over there about 18 years ago. I didn't really, it wasn't premeditated or anything. I just went over there and just to have a look around and see if I could get some opportunities, which I did. I got some work. Um, yeah, you know, as a, as a friend of mine once, and she said, the place is only as good as the people you know. And, uh, you know, a lot of people from, you know, that maybe haven't been there much, so like, oh, what's it like over there? What's it like over there? And I'm like, like it's all right, you know, it's about 72 degrees every day, you know, <laughs> there's beaches, I'm a skier, if you want to go skiing, you can go skiing. Apart from that, it's pretty average, you know. No, <laughs> it, it's not, <laughs> no, I love it, I love it. It's not a bad place to live, you know. It's not something I ever thought I, w- I would, you know, I would be living there, but um, I'm very grateful. One thing I've always, I've been very grateful for the opportunities I've had in my life. Um and maybe I've been lucky, but at the same time, you make your own luck, don't you? And um, 
Yeah, I was a, a wee lad from the west coast of Scotland, from Glasgow. But um, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting uh, experience, and I've worked with some incredible people, you know, um, in my in my career. Um, Ramon, I'm working with Julianne Moore, which has been a, a uh, it's been a great experience as well. Um, uh, recently, I was just uh, watching a funny YouTube video about Robin Williams and how he got his accent from Mrs. Doubtfire, which, uh, and he mentioned Bill Forsyth in a film that he did with him called Being Human. Um, it was in that. I was in that, and it was uh, Bobby Carlyle and a bunch of other lads. And uh, I remember working working with him and uh, what a delight he was uh, and and thinking to myself whatever oh, wherever I go in this uh, in this life or in this in this um, you know uh, career um, to have the uh, I, I guess his 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 talent was only matched by his uh, by his humanity frankly his humility he's such a he was he was so um, warm to people and of course you know he was a big film star, movie star, comedian, uh, whatever. But um, I remember the first time I met him, I was sitting in the makeup truck at five in the morning and he'd met everybody the previous day. And uh, and he said, hi, I got everybody's name or, you know, it's 12 guys. So, and I was sitting in the makeup truck at five in the morning and I looked over, I didn't want to say anything to stop him. And, and he looks over to me and he goes, good morning, Tony. And I'm like, oh, this comes out. Like, good, good morning, yeah, Rob. And he's like, he said, like, this is a hell of a time to go to work, isn't it? So I'm like, I'm like is this wrong? And I'm like, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Anyway, for the next two weeks, we, you know, we'd, we'd regale stories and um, uh, he was just a, a delight. Anyway, I digress. I was just sort of going off on one. But yeah, LA is a fun place. It's, um, you know, it has its ups and downs. You know, sometimes you, you know, it's like being in the team, Brian, you know, when you're playing well. Your, uh, you know, your 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 coach, your your the gaffer's going to pick you. But when maybe uh, if you're not at the top of your game, you'll be on the sidelines. And in many ways, uh, to use that analogy, that that's what it can be like. And in my line of work uh, as an actor, you know, sometimes you can get the opportunities, and 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 sometimes it's it's quiet. And then a lot of the time, it's uh, it's keeping yourself busy when it's um when it is quiet and maybe you're not working as much as you'd like. I know that's true of many actors and or, or anybody in many professions recent, recently, but um, but uh, I always try to keep myself busy, stop thinking too much, you know. What about, what about <laughs> ruminating? Being a, what about being a hoops man based over there? Have you got many uh, Celtic supporting showbiz mates that get up yeah. at God knows when in the morning and try and watch the match? Yeah, well, there's Ross McCall, uh, if you know Ross. And then, you know, Martin Comston. But Ross still lives in LA and Martin's obviously moved out to uh, to um, Vegas right now. But there's a place called Jockster Dailies. It's a it's a, a Celtic pub in Culver City. I've met Rod Stewart, who's been in there many times. I, I met the big in there once, Billy Conley. It was a Celtic, Celtic um, uh, AC Milan game. And I remember I just kept shouting because they were battering us at AC Milan at the time. And I, I just kept shouting at the TV, no pass around, no pass around, you know, the sort of uh, <laughs> famous uh, you know, anti, anti-Franco shout. You know, and I, I remember at half time, I was, I was sort of in awe. I mean, it's Billy Conley. He comes up to me and he's like, all right, how you doing? I'm like, oh, Billy, it's great to meet you. I'm Tony, nice to meet you. And you look down at my boots and I had these cowboy boots on kind of, you know, ankle boots, green and black, whatever. And he goes, I like your boots. Where did you get them? And I said, oh, I actually got them in a, in London, in Chelsea. I know where you got them. And I'm like, I where? Did you get them on the King's Road? And I went, oh, I did. He goes, I know where, I know which shop. And I went, which one? He went, Our Souls. You bought them in Our Souls. That's a great fucking name, isn't it? And, and he was right. I did buy them in Our Souls. Um, anyway, I, I've met I met Billy in there, and then he said, oh, "I'm I'm playing a gig tonight. Do you want to come?" And I said, "I'm already coming. I've already got tickets." <laughs> so uh, I went to see the big one, and I was an old school Brentwood. Um, it was called the VA, and uh, and then I went backstage afterwards, and. Um, uh, Steve Buscemi was there actually, and uh, a bunch of other 
David Mamet was there, the, the, the playwright as well. But um, I don't know if you, I can tell you a quick story. Steve, B Billy said, tell that story. He goes, he goes, Steve, Steve Buscemi, he goes, what story? He goes, you know, the story about this thing in that time when Steve Buscemi's like, oh, I, I feel like such an asshole. Okay, I'll tell it. So they were a film, uh, it was in the Edinburgh, they were a film uh, festival, the Edinburgh Film Festival, and they went up to Billy's castle that night. Billy's under a tree playing guitar around the fire, and he's like, oh, you know, that's my daddy's and have it or whatever, whatever the lyrics were. But Steve Buscemi thought the lyric, he was sort of getting emotional. And Billy looked over to him after the song and he's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he's like, yeah, you know, it was just the lyrics where Billy were really kind of, uh, you know, recently I, you know, my, I lost a family member and I, it was very moving for me. And he's like, what are you talking about? He goes, you know, the, the lyrics. He goes, what did you think I was singing? And he goes, Oh, how I miss my daddies in heaven. Oh, my daddies, I miss my daddies in heaven. And he's like, oh, that, that's not what I was singing about. I was singing about fish and potatoes. <laughs> and he's like, what, what are you talking about? You were singing about your father who passed away. He goes, no, no. I, I was saying, I, how I miss my tortoises and herring. My, how I miss my tortoises and herring. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, the so Steve family was like, oh, I felt like such a dick, you know, I felt like such a dick. And Conley's like, that was hilarious. I was absolutely pissing myself. <laughs> anyway, but yes. The Celtic, sorry, the Celtic Supporters Club, uh, there's always some characters uh, in there. Um, um, you know, it's, there's always, it's always a good laugh, but, um, you know, whatever you, whenever. It's also, there's a bunch of Liverpool fans that go there as well. But, uh, yeah, there's, and there's also, there's a football team in LA now, the, the LA Derby Galaxy in Los Angeles FC, LAFC. And it's a friend of mine, Richard Roscoe, who... Um, Who's the marketing director? And recently, I was at the I was at the final, uh, which was a you know it was a, a pretty mad game. Uh, Gareth Bale came off the bench. They were winning one 0 It was one each. They were losing two one. It was two each. Uh, they went down to ten men, and uh, it was three two to the other team. They came back. Gareth Bale scores a header. And it was extra time on extra time. So they played 120 minutes. And then it was like 127 minutes and Gareth Bale scores a header. His last open play goal of his career, actually, um, apart from the penalty, he scored in the penalty shootout, which LAFC won the, uh, uh, the you know, they won the, the championship on, on penalties. But um, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun place. There's plenty to do in LA, you know. You know, you can get into trouble if you want and uh, you can... You know, you can have a good time if you want, but uh, but uh, yeah, you should come out, Brian. You should come out and do a podcast from uh, Los Angeles number one. There's an invite if I've ever heard one. <laughs> 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 we've, we're gonna have to add it to the list of places we've uh, we've been invited to do live shows from. <laughs> what was it? There was a lovely, I was listening to Nick Robinson chatting, and it made me laugh about when he would go to the strip for the end and he said. <laughs> He would have to tie his glasses onto his face. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. He'd have to tie, because it reminded me of going to the jungle as a kid, not that I had glasses, but you couldn't have anything not tied to your person. Because if, if you had a beer or a drink, or if you had your, well, we never had phones back in the 80s, but anything would just, <laughs> you would lose it, you know. Anyway. <laughs> I was thinking of possible Celtic movies that we could try and get made into Hollywood blockbusters. Um, yeah. I, think, uh, I think the Lisbon Lions in 1967 might be a bit obvious. So my next mm. thought was Love Street 86 uh, and the yes. day that Celtic and Hearts went head to head for the Scottish title on the last day of the season. Um, I'm pretty sure most people listening to this know the background to the story. Uh, Celtic yeah. had to win by a certain number of goals away, to St away at St Mirren's Love Street which thanks to Chucky and uh, his teammates, they did. And uh, they also ho had to hope that Hearts tripped up at Dundee, which of course they did. So whether Steven Spielberg or Ron Howard ever get back to us to direct this epic, uh, we thought, Tony, um, with your expert eye and acting knowledge, um, that you could help us cast a few of the central characters to this Against the Odds sporting drama. Who's playing Albert Kidd? I mean, well, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that okay. because first, I, the thing the I think the first role is a bit of a shoe in Tony, um, because I've got you penciled in as Danny McGrain, 
Uh, obviously, right. there's the there's the familial connection that we mentioned previously, but we've got the beard, so there's a bit of a likeness there. Yeah, so, thing. okay, we might have to, we're going we're going to have to get the hair dye out. Um, but what what do you think? Would you be up for that? I, I would be up for that. I mean, <laughs> I think that would be a great day. I remember that day. Uh, I wasn't at the game. I was playing football, but um, I won't go into something else. But I did play Lou Macari once, and uh, I met Lou. And when I met him, he's like. It's nice to meet you, Tony. It just seems a wee bit odd, though. How are you going to play me? You've got ginger hair. You look nothing like me. And I said, you know what? I know a really good hairdresser, Lou, and don't you worry. <laughs> so, yes, I think I could go and see the same person and maybe, uh, you know, I mean, I could never defend as well as Danny, but um, I'd, I'm, I'd be down for, for dyeing the old hair, you know. I mean, back in, back in those days, they had a maturity about them, Celtic players. I'm not saying... Brian, Mc uh, Brian McClare has a maturity, but Brian McClare, you young and youthful. But there was some <laughs> Celtic players that always looked like they were in their fifties, you know. <laughs> even, <laughs> even when they were in their twenties, you know, they, they were sort of that age. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd be down for playing uh, for Danny. I think that would be a who's going to play? Uh, dare I say, it, Mo Johnston? <laughs> Well, yes, uh, that is going to be controversial, isn't it? And how are we going to, which which actor is going to carry that stigma throughout their career? Um, I I kind of thought maybe Kevin McKidd. Kevin, uh, Kevin could do it. Yeah, he's not. I don't think Kevin's a Celtic fan, so he might. Um, yeah, I mean, James James McAvoy is Murdo McLeod. Mm. He mm. could be uh, good one. Jared Butler, um, possibly as uh, a Roy Aiken. <laughs> good shout. Um, good shout. I think Ewan McGregor. Would be um, I don't know Billy Stark you could get that. <laughs> <laughs> what about your old mate uh, Paul McStay, Chucky? He would uh, um, Martin Compton. We could get a job for him. Yeah. Martin or Ross McCall. They definitely. Uh, you could put a call into uh, them, couldn't you? You could definitely get on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we. Uh, we I, I'd thought of maybe Ian Glenn as Davy Hay. Oh wow! Absolutely, oh, yeah. 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 Such a. Yeah, great. A commanding presence, indeed. Did, did you choose anybody for Albert Kidd yet? No, we'd have to. Um, that would, it's amazing that day that Hearts, Hearts had they'd not been defeated all season. Is that right, Brian? That, something like that. Is that, that. right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, well, that, there was something like that, yeah. Mm. But they had... Um, well, we had to win the last nine games or something like that, you know, as well. So it was, it was almost like a... Yeah, well, he, he wouldn't want to get a, one game at a time. That's how we looked at it. He got to the last day and we felt really good about it. We knew that we felt confident we'd be able to do our job. And what a lot of people don't uh, realise about the backstory as well about it was that Dundee had a, a chance of qualifying for Europe. And their manager that day was uh, Archie Knox, who was Alex Ferguson's assistant, both at Aberdeen and at uh, Man United. Yeah. And uh, Dundee had a chance of, depending on the other results, actually qualifying for Europe. So it was a so that they wanted to win the game as well. So people were talking about St. Man being a pushover and all that. We played really well on that. We had been playing well, and we played brilliantly on the day and some fantastic goals. Uh, and Dundee themselves were um, themselves and they really wanted to win that game also. Uh, what they kind of the, one of the things that's always tickled me about it is that. There was loads of merchandise went up to Dundee with regards to Hearts being champions and all that kind of thing, of which all these people had to bring them back because they right. didn't win the championship, you know. God. And I've often wondered where they are because they quite like one of those t-shirts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my there must God. be some. There must be in somebody's garage somewhere, somebody, you know, some loft be... somewhere, you know. So we didn't have anything. We didn't have anything. There was nothing at the top. There was no e expectation. No, right? we didn't expect no... to win the game, but we, there was no. I don't even know whether if somebody where the champagne came from in the dressing room, or that maybe somebody ran out and got that in the period between getting off the pitch and and, um, and yeah. there was champagne got appeared from somewhere, you know, and maybe and even lot, that Sit Man had gave us. I don't really know, but we and maybe they did the old the old buddies. But I mean, Hearts could have just taken a point, right? A point. I think a point was mm -hmm. enough for them, and, and also right. the goal swing as well. It had to be. Around about four of a goal swing, we were four up and four nothing up at half time. I mean, I've got five some, nothing up yeah. after fifty minutes. You know, I've got. Yeah. I mean, I've got some. Uh, I mean, listen, we've had uh, uh, Martin O'Neill at Motherwell when we, you know, whatever helicopter Sunday and all that. We've 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 
sadly lost the league on the last day of the season at Celtic ourselves. But uh, Ken Stott and other, you know, famous jambos, you know, I mean, I do... <laughs> Just because there's not other many other many teams have won the Scottish League that <clears throat> as much as I was elated that we won it that day, you know, there's always a little bit <clears throat> where I go, Jesus, the poor Jambos, that must have been because <laughs> you saw the back of the goal. There was so so many away fans. It was yeah. incredible. Well, yeah, it was 2-0 so. the final score, wasn't it? It was 2-0. Yeah, yeah. 2-0, yeah. 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 Albert Kidd scored both of them. Yeah, who, yeah. who Albert's a Celtic fan. We're not get letting you get away with this, Brian. We're still on that casting note, we haven't decided who's playing you in the uh, in the Love Street movie. Um, I'm just thinking who, uh, who, who are the possible candidates. Um, I mean, our people have already got into uh, Richard Madden's people about the part. What do you think? Any uh, anyone else in mind, Tony? Yeah, Richard Madden, that's a fine actor, very handsome, as handsome. Brian McClell. you're like a fine wine, Brian, with that wonderful beard. But <laughs> as a as a young man. When you were in your 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 dark hole down the mine shaft, you were he was a he was a, a striking looking fellow as well, Mark. You know, <laughs> it'd have to be Ed, Edry's version of George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Old Jorge Miguel. Um, maybe it could be James McAvoy. You know, it could be it could be James McAvoy. You know. Well, obviously, with all films, you've got the, the, the then and now, so we'd obviously have to have a Chocky Circa 86 and a Chocker uh, mm. Circuit, <laughs> Chocky Circa now. So, yeah, there's potentially two parts for. Uh, yeah, I think, two, I'm thinking I th you can't have a Scottish film without yeah. James Cosmo. So, I think straight away he's, he's penciled in for Chocky 2023. Uh, I could just play myself. Uh, well, yeah. I wouldn't put it past you. Right. So, without any further ado, we've got this quiz mark, haven't we? Yep. We can't let an episode pass without a little game, can we? Um, our quiz this time is simply called Hoops or Oops. Uh, Tony, you're a celebrity Celtic fan, but for every one of you, there's a famous fan of that other lot. Uh, so yours and Brian's job here is to identify the famous Celt by saying Hoops and the famous Rangers fan by saying Oops. Um, how do we know they support Celtic and Rangers? Fans. Well, Are these fans, fans. you saying? Yeah, not yeah celebrity fans. Yeah, yeah. and right. the way the way you know they support Celtic or Rangers um, is because Wikipedia said so. It must be true. <laughs> um, right. It's the it's the try, yeah, it's the tried and trusted penalty shootout format. You get five each uh, alternately, and if there's a tie break at the end, you both get to share the CR Smith sponsored trophy. Um, are you both happy with the rules? I'm sure. Not happy with the rules? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that. That's true. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have asked that. Uh, okay. Well, as as no, always, I guess the topics of the quiz. No. Well, <laughs> our guest has the honour of going first. Um, so, Tony, you're going to kick us off with former EastEnders actress and star of Love Actually, Martine McCutcheon. Um, hoops. She is a hoop. That's just a guess, wasn't it? Educated. There was a guess, to <laughs> Brian. Yeah, with a name like McCutcheon. Good. <laughs> There's a picture of her with a Celtic strip on it. I knew you knew that. I knew you knew that, Brian. When we had a bit of a dry run yesterday, I said to Mark, don't give Brian that question because I know he knows the answer. That, that, it's not random, this this show, you know. We don't just throw it together. We've There's, been some research. Yeah. There's some research done. Well, let's see. Yeah. That. Let's see then. So, Chucky, you're... Okay, 1-0, Tony. Yeah, 1-0, Tony. And Chucky, your opener is TV host and funny man, Clive Anderson. Clive Anderson likes football. I thought he was an mm -hmm. Aberdeen supporter. <laughs> I'll go for oops. Yeah, well, it was. I mean, you accused Tony of guessing. You just guessed, and you guessed right. Um, he is oops Rangers, according to Wikipedia. He was a big Arsenal man, wasn't he as well? It's so Arsenal, was he? Yeah, I think his dad is. It's through his dad, though. His dad was a Scottish fella uh, who was a big Rangers fan, apparently. So that's where the connection is. Right. Okay, why not? Yeah, a lot. A lot of the times, you can tell by their names. Yeah. <laughs> Well, some of these, some of these you won't be. Let's see if it's no, a giveaway. Let's see if Tony, let's see if Tony can get this one by the name. Um, your second celeb is American singer songwriter Lana Del Rey. Oh, hoops! Was that hoops? It was hoops. She is a hoop straight down, <laughs> straight past the keeper into the back of there. Two one. You've seen her in that club in Los Angeles, haven't you? At six o'clock, six o'clock in the morning watching yourself. That was a game. terrible penalty. Went in off the goalkeeper. Yeah. Okay, Chucky, you're behind, so you got to uh, get this one. Uh, it's British rapper Tinchy Strider. Uh, he's an Arsenal fan or something. Like that. My United fan, isn't that? 
Uh, it doesn't count. Not according to Wikipedia. It's not quite a tense you say that. Nice. Oops. Oh, he's guessed it. He's guessed it right again. So, yeah. Oops. According to our sources, he's a Rangers man. So you're both 100% two for two. Two each. Mm. I'm happy with two. <laughs> well, we're at, the, uh, the crucial, we're at the crucial halfway stage here. So, Tony, your third penalty is American actress Jennifer Love Hewitt. <sighs> Are these season ticket holders at Celtic or Rangers, <laughs> any of these people? <laughs> okay, Jennifer, Jennifer Love Hewitt. God, I've never seen her down the supporters club in Culver City. Um, oh, because she wouldn't be a, one of them, would she? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, you know what? That's why she probably is. Um, oops. Oh, Tony, you've blazed it over the bar. Oh my she God! Is a Celtic she... supporter, apparently. Yeah. Wow! I thought I should have. Oh well. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm sorry. So Brian, can you capitalise? And uh, Mark's done me here. He's given me a, the first difficult one to pronounce of this quiz. Your next one is former president of Albania, Ilya Meta. He's a <laughs> Celtic fan. Cause Celtic went to Albania in 1978. Oh Seven or something like that. Oh, it's Mark, you didn't didn't see that one coming, did you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Three, two. All right. Yeah, right, Tony, this is to up, yeah. this is to drag yourself European back into Cup. it here. Um uh, so we're at the business end. And Tony, your next one is um, world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman. Oh God. <clears throat> What's his name again? Tom Stoltman. Jesus. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to do the old... Uh, he's a... Uh, oops. He is an oops, yes. He's a Rangers <laughs> fan. Well done. <laughs> right Still in it. Center. Still in it. Yeah. Hanging on there. 3-3. Three, three. Shocky, Shocky, your penultimate attempt is ACDC guitar legend Angus Young. Oops. Yeah, correct. Rangers, wow. man, Rangers man, apparently, according to our... Uh... I told you, it's all in the name. <laughs> yeah, I think your facial expressions prove that not to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tony, you've got a score here. Uh, yeah. And again, it's another, act it's another actor. Uh, and this time it is John Hamm. John Hamm from Mad Men. Mm-hmm. All in the name, eh, Chucky? <laughs> yeah, he's I don't know the answer to this. Keeping quiet now. I don't know the answer. I've never met any Hamstry Brigton. No, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it, he's from the um, Castle Milk Hams. Yes, he's from the, the Castle Cafe Ole. Um, no, let's, I've got to say, I've got, I'm going to say hoops. Doing it, yes, it is hoops. Yeah, he's still in it. So, Brian, is it all the pressure over to you now, Brian? Yeah, no pressure on me. Yeah, fifth yeah. penalty, penalty taken. Sometimes they say they leave the best. I've surpassed my own expectations, yeah. <laughs> but you can finish it on hours. You, you can finish this off. One, I know, Brian. get better at this, right? What is it? The fifth one is TV presenter Kirsty Gallagher. Oh my gosh, that's pretty easy. Oof. There's a bit of gamesmanship going on behind. Oops. <laughs> what? Oops. Did you say oops? Oops. Oops without the H. Yeah. No. The, ga Ooh, the, game the, post. the gamesmanship has put him off and he's hit the post. <laughs> which there means which means it's a draw and means we're screwed because we haven't got a tiebreaker. No, no, I'm it's right. gonna be a it's gonna be a shared presentation and a bus oh, open top bus parade around George Square. Um, Brian, come come to Los Angeles. We'll have a rematch at Celtics number one at Jockster Dailies. I like yeah. the um, yeah, I like that idea of that watching the games in Culver City, whatever that is. We, right. were, we, we were only talking about Los Angeles three in the morning or whatever time. Right? <laughs> we were only talking about California in Macclesfield the other week. Weren't oh, we? that, I, yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> one of Brian's many local Nick Robinson's former uh, local, the Admiral, oh, fun. Admiral Rodney. Yeah. Yeah, uh, can I just ask you one final question? Yeah, Tony. Um, 
you you're quoted as saying that you, one of the things that you miss about Scotland is cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> right, which I, so I, I hopefully I'm correct in that that you meant the chip shop. So when yes. you go to see your mum, and uh, what are you, what do you go, what do you, what's your go to? Right, you got to go to the chip, and you go. Oh, are you looking yeah. at it? You go. Oh, I can't. Oh, I've got to have this. So you yeah. take. Uh, you're taking. Uh, your daughter's called Bo, isn't she? She is called Bo. Right, yeah. So you're taking Bo to the chip shop. And you go right. This is what your daddy always gets. You know. What is it you get? Is it a pudding <laughs> supper? Is it a haggis yeah, supper? No, is it special it was, fish? Uh, it now be... you have to explain what a special fish is. So <laughs> in comparison to a, 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 a normal a king, fish, <laughs> a king rib with two pickles. I want to see uh, Coldplay recently. I scalped her. I scalped the old ticket uh, at Hamden, and I, I, I was I, as I was sauntering up the way up the road, which is always nice to walk home from a a gig at Hamden to my mother's. I popped into the chippy and I got a smoked sausage supper with uh, <clears throat> with three pickles and uh, <laughs> yeah. and plenty of I get because I, I do like the the Edinburgh version, the salt and sauce. So I do get the old HP on it and uh, three pickles, uh, smoked sausage supper. If I'm very hungry, then I might throw in a, a king rib as well because you don't get you don't get them in Los Angeles. <laughs> You don't get them anywhere apart from a chip shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this this deep fried Mars bar is a myth. I've never seen it. Oh, I've had it. A, a, a refu- have you had it? Have you tried oh, it? Oh, there's, video, there's video evidence on YouTube. Oh, of yeah, I've had it, yeah. yeah. It's actually all right, yeah. Yeah, I do love a smoked sausage supper, I've got to say. It's, um, it's definitely... And I do, of course, I do completely go for the can of iron brew as well. Because oh. uh, unless, unless I go... Was it feel kidneys, fat? Full fat, yeah, most definitely. The King's Head in, in Los Angeles, Brian, it's a, you know, the, the rugby, the football, everything's on down there. There's a wee shop next to it. And you go in and you buy a star bar, uh, a double decker, some quavers, and uh, <laughs> you, it's like $48, you know? All <laughs> 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 so, oh, right, darling, is that enough for you? And you're like, yeah, I bought three items and you get you, know, you don't get much change out of a $100 bill. <laughs> they, they, saw, they saw me coming, you know, like mug. You know? <laughs> they, don't, uh, they don't sell Botfast in there as well, do they? No, they don't, no. I, I thought they, 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 were, they were selling El Dorado once, but apparently it's, it's sold out very quickly. So um, <laughs> I bought. <laughs> well, did you buy it all? Did you buy it all? I did. <laughs> I did, but buy it in bulk, you know. No, I do go in there, and my wife is like, "How old are you? Six? And I'm like, "What?" And I've literally got a bag of crap, and uh, I've literally spent about sixty five dollars. And she goes, "What are you? What are you going to do with all that?" And I'm like. Uh, maybe I, I, I'm not going to eat it all, but I just it makes me feel closer to Scotland, <laughs> knowing that uh, I've got a pack of after eights and uh, some Maltesers uh, and and my you know my closet, you know. No macaroons <laughs> or uh, Tunnock's tea cakes. Now. Oh, I love a macaroon. <laughs> Tunnock's tea cakes are. Um, are a thing of beauty, aren't they? Well, a nice cup of tea, you know. Hey, yeah. There you go, Brian. If we go to Los Angeles for a live show, you're going to be taking, <laughs> take all that stuff, yeah. taking all that stuff. Yeah. There's a sideline, a big there. bag full of. Yeah. <laughs> Open up a street store. Yeah. You better call me if you come over, Brian. Definitely, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you all the spots. <laughs> <laughs> you can put your order in as well. <laughs> and ask one question: Are you going? Is anybody? Are you going to the? Um, do you still go to games, Brian? You go I've to- got I've got season tickets. I buy my own season tickets, Tony. I don't have right. I don't rely on all these people sitting to make it so all all the people a lot of not all the people, a lot of people I meet because I play for Celtic, play for Manchester United, they all say, Oh, you go to the games. I says, Well, I go to see Celtic because I've got season tickets. And they yeah. go, What you don't get in for nothing? I says, I Why why would I get in for nothing? Because you <laughs> played for them. I says, well, no, I don't. I says, and then they'll say, do you go to United Games? I don't go to United Games. I go, uh, yeah, but uh, you'd be able to go, wouldn't you, if you want to? I says, hey, well, I could go, but I won't get in. No, but you'll, you'll get in, won't you? I says, how am I going to get in? Because you played there for a long time. I says, no, it's not what doesn't work that way. I says, and I says, I wouldn't ask anybody for any tickets. I'm quite happy. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I was a supporter before. I became a football player and I'm a supporter again. So as a supporter, you have to pay your way. So... And I've sure. got two season tickets, so yeah, I go yeah. to as many Celtic home games as I can. Uh, I've not managed to get to any away games yet. Can so I just finish one more thing? Um, I know I, 
I played with Murdo McLeod, bless him. I played Murdo uh, over, I played golf with Murdo in Los Angeles when he came out a few times, you know. And, um, but he's, 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 get, he's doing a little bit better, I hear. Yes. I, he's yeah. texting his wife, you know. But um, I, I hope he... I hope he's doing better. Have you heard from Murdo at all, Brian? No, I heard somebody that spoke to him uh, a few months ago um, and um, he he got out of hospital. He was in hospital for a long time. And, and he, I think it was Roy Aitken that was telling me, actually. And uh, he's doing a lot better. Yeah, he's at home. Yeah, yeah well, that's good. Yeah, no, it'd be good to... You know, he came out, when he came out to LA, he's uh, regaling us with some, some uh, f- fun stories. Uh, and with that, we're calling cut on this episode. And firstly, Tony, it's been an immense pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy filming schedule to be here. Um, where are we going to see you on the telly next? Um, don't know. That's a good question. That show, the second season of Your Honour, it just has just come out. I think it's on Paramount Plus um, right now. And I'm, I'm shooting a show called Mary and George. It's uh, um, Nick Gallatin and Julianne Moore. Um, uh, I actually play King James the Sixth of Scotland, first of England, and it's a historical drama about um, about these two people uh, trying to, you know, social climbers, you might say, and uh, that's on Sky Atlantic. But that'll be coming out later this year. We're still we're filming that right now, um, but it's quite a compelling uh, historical uh, tale of uh, of. Um, uh, of his life and the, the people that surround him. So that's, that'll be coming out later in the year. Brilliant. Uh, Brian, Matthew, thanks, lads. A hugely enjoyable as ever. No worries. Thanks. And thanks, Tony. Thanks for coming on. Pleasure, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, thanks to you for listening. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Brian McClair Pod and subscribe on most, if not all, major podcast providers. We're part of the Sport Social Podcast Network, so check out www.sport-social.co.uk for details of all the great shows they're working with. We'll be back again soon, God willing. So uh, that's all that's left for me to do now is to sign off and see you soon. Life with Brian. Life with Brian. Talking films or music, laugh with Brian, talking TV and food, laugh with Brian, talking trivia and exercise, laugh with Brian, it's different every episode, laugh with Brian, talking politics and football, laugh with Brian, it's different every episode, laugh with Brian, laugh with Brian.